good afternoon director sir good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome dr hardik to this session uh, so as uh, as you all know that today's session or today's fdp is on uh, various learning uh, learning and teaching online and what could be the various issues and various challenges we might face uh, dr hardik is going to help us understand and uh, answer any our queries if we have some questions or some queries or some curiosity with respect to that uh, i have already shared dr hardik's uh, profile with you dr hardik is associate dean at crown institute of uh, management in sydney australia and he has uh, more than 16 year, 20 years of experience in uh, 14 years of experience in teaching and you know assisting and supervising undergraduate postgraduate and phd students and um, dr hardik is a phd in strategic management from nursing monji institute and he is mba in management so dr hardik over to you well thank you very much uh, madam for uh, kind introduction and uh, thank you everyone for joining me here today so i have titled my presentation as shifting sense in higher education because anyone uh, who is here who has been in higher education for more than one and a half or two decades would uh, would really agree that you know currently we are at a time where we are kind of you know standing on a beach and a wave has come and wave is going and suddenly we feel that oh what is happening you know that kind of a feeling is what currently all the higher education administrators and and academic and leaders are facing so um uh, welcome and uh, thanks for your time i'm going to i'm going to divide this presentation in um, in two parts i am not going to talk more than 20 minutes because we will see a little later in the presentation that research is suggests that 20 minute is the cardinal limit of what somebody can have the attention on online so i would uh, i would cover my presentation for 20 minutes and then i will be uh, open to any questions you have and uh, i'm sure that we would have constructive discussion there so i have uh, divided my presentation into broadly two parts so the first part is the three layers of challenges which we currently have so think of it like uh, the three circles you know the first the outer circle then there is a middle circle and then there is a third circle so the outer circle i'll call the industry challenges so when i say industry i'm talking about higher education and uh, higher education as a general which includes all universities and higher education providers whether it's a, whether it's a public university or private university i would i would look at the challenges which are faced by the industry second are the institutional challenges which are uh, which are uh, slightly more contextual and pressing and uh, and which we see in the institutions have to deal as we speak because of the coronavirus and sudden push for going online and the third uh or the or the inner circle as you can say as you can say is where i would be talking about the delivery challenges so delivery challenges are the challenges challenges which i and you as lecturers and 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 professors face when it comes to dealing with students online you know and uh, and uh, quite often whether we like it or not that's going to be a reality for all of us uh in the corona virus times uh then i'm going to look at some of the learnings which uh, which i have gathered over the past 8 um, weeks in terms of moving online and uh, i'm also going to share the rapid deployment strategy which we used uh when we suddenly get to know that you know we have to move online because of the uh, covid-19 and the restrictions and social distancing issues and 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 um, and and all the issues which follows that so i'm i am going to share some of uh, our experiences of um, going online rapidly and what we what steps we did we take to make sure that we go online quickly so i'll be sharing some of the rapid deployment strategies with you and then i'll be open to any questions if you have now starting off with industry challenges um, as i said corona virus has accelerated what has been happening in our industry for a long time so if 
or a lot of you are as or more experienced than me so you would you would really understand that we have been through a lot of changes over the past decade but the whole coronavirus has 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 pushed us into the top gear in terms of changes so what are the broad industry challenges and uh, this particular diagram or a model which you see comes from the uh, the economist intelligence unit and qatar foundation's very recent research which was just released uh, last month so uh, according to them there are five key challenges to the higher education as a sector as an industry the first is contributing to an increasingly digital economy and society you know we are in a world where digital is real and how will we be able to handle that environment so that's challenge number one challenge number two is to leverage technology to deliver better and more inclusive education um, we have always believed and i still believe that there is no better way to learn than face to face but the reality is that you know there are competing models and we have to compete with those models so how can we leverage uh, technology to deliver better and more inclusive education the third challenge is to respond to growing demand but shifting demographics now quite often we say that india is the youngest country in the in the world and it is the youngest country in the world but the reality is that in another 10 years the whole demography would change so people who are currently in between 20 to 30 years would be in 30 to 40 and their educational needs would significantly change those who are in 30 to 40 would be in 40 to 50 and their educational needs would would, would change so how do we how do we uh, respond to uh, an ever moving population and their changing demands uh, the fourth challenge is striking a balance between public and private provision. Probably doesn't uh, doesn't bother much to us because we are all private sector employees. But this becomes very important when when we are talking from a policy point of view. And the fifth, which is which is important to a group like Symbiosis, but super important to people like us, is remaining global in an age of nationalism. You know globally we have governments which are increasingly becoming nationalist who are bringing borders back and restricting the visa and restricting the people movement then the prop the challenge with us as a higher education provider especially people who people who are sitting in australia and us and uk who rely significantly on international students about how will we keep ourselves global in the age of nationalism so these are five key industry level challenges now let me sort of double click and zoom in to the institutional challenges so what are the institutional challenges which we are facing and this list comes partly from the economist study as well as partly based on my experience so the first challenge is how to minimize the learning deficit we all know that students have to go back to their homes they had to they were in a very constrained environments of university and you really study well in a, in a constrained environment they have to go back now they are in a different environment with very different level of environment and access and opportunity and in this there is no doubt that there is a deficit which is happening in learning so at an institutional level our first challenge is how do we make sure that we minimize the learning deficit which has happened because of because of lockdown and because of of the post corona impact second is bridging the digital access divide now this is very important i still remember that i would i would meet a lot of students on campus in the evening when i'm when i'm walking post my dinner and when i ask them that oh why you are still on campus why don't you go home or why don't you go to your hostel rooms and their their responses would be that oh the internet access here is much better now if students had better access when they were on campus which they definitely have what would be the level of access when now they are spread across the national boundaries 
and and un, under under very different set of digital access environments so we have to really work as an institution to bridge the digital access divide which is now created the third is keeping students engaged motivated and in good mental health now this is the biggest challenge and i'll talk about the engagement in next part of my presentation at length but keeping students engaged in a world where they are studying from you and the next screen they are on a TikTok or next screen they are on Facebook and, and, and on WeChat and WhatsApp or whatever it is, it's demanding, right? The lecturers have to be innovative and they have to, they have to come up with new strategies to make sure that they keep students engaged. Now that's engagement and we'll talk more about it. But how to keep them motivated? A lot of our learning happens because of the peer level pressures. So, you know, I learn because my colleague is learning. You know, I finish that assignment because my friend has already finished it, or he's doing it or she's doing it. How do we keep people motivated in an environment where they are all alone and there is hardly any peer pressure? Third is how to keep them in good mental health. Now, this is very important. Remember, Currently, the uncertainties are not only impacting mature people like us, but it is having a profound impact on students. Remember, our students, usually MBA students, they would graduate. Now, when they don't know what is going to be the situation of economy, they don't know what is going to happen with their internships, how will they be in good mental health? So, you know, as an institution, we have to also make sure that they stay in good mental health. The next institutional challenge is assuring integrity of testing and learning assessment. Now, this is a million dollar challenge, should I say. It's a million dollar challenge because everyone is everywhere currently. Um, the invigilations are not working. The exam systems are not working. How do we make sure that, that testing remains relevant and we assess students appropriately? We'll talk about it a little later. The last institutional challenge is how do we mitigate upcoming financial crisis? Now, there is no doubt whether you are in US or in India or Australia like I am. One thing is certain that we are all going to go through difficult and rough financial times. And if we as matured age academics feel that financial uncertainty is looming large on us, Think about young 21 year old, 22 year old people. You know, they have debts, they have taken bank loans, they have taken, you know, variety of debts to pay for the MBA qualification, which they have, which they are currently pursuing or about to finish. And that they have, and they are thrown in this whole uncertain world. Yeah, so we as an institution have to also deal with mitigating upcoming financial crisis. All right. Now, moving on to the final layer, which is the delivery challenge. And I'm going to take a bit of liberty and going to go slightly beyond the uh, PowerPoint slides here. So when we are designing the delivery, and I'll talk more about what we did and, 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 and what are the challenges, engagement is a problem. If any one of you believed that after Facebook and WhatsApp and, and smartphone students have not been paying attention in the class, trust me, the problem is 100 times more when you are teaching online because you are competing for attention exactly with the same platform. There's a, engagement is, is very, very important. Now, second challenge is participation now attendance and participation are two different things researchers say that attendance online is not declining or in most of the cases attendance is going up so it clearly means that because people have access people have the freedom to log in from anywhere more and more people are logging into the classroom so if you are in an environment like australia where attendances are not not mandatory we have very poor attendance in face-to-face -face, and we have noticed that in the, in the online environment, the attendances have gone up. But you can't equate attendance with participation. Participation is a, is a, is a different ballgame and participation has not gone up with online. Participation still remains robustly strong in face-to-face -face environment. 
So we as academic have to really think about how do we improve participation in our classes when it comes to online teaching. Now, uh, partly students and their distractions and stuff like that are, are to blame. Partly, and I'm taking now my associate dean's hat, I'm now no longer talking as a lecturer. I will again be a lecturer in two minutes time, but let me talk as an associate dean. Um, the problem of the higher education academics has been that we have always believed that we are a cottage industry. So we are a craft-based industry. What I do, I do. If I'm a I'm a lecturer or a professor of human resource management. Human resource management is my unit. I decide the unit outline. I decide the assessments. I deliver it. If I want to be strict, I be strict. If I want to be liberal, I be liberal. No one should dictate what I am doing. So I create my own cottage industry for myself. Now that model has worked. I have been an academic in that model and, uh, and I have faced challenges in that model. The reality is that online learning will force us to force us to work with so many diverse people that we will have to break our cottage industry kind of an attitude right now this is nothing negative you know i'm saying that i've been a cottage industry member right so don't think like that i've been like you i've been what you've been right now uh, this leads us to the five stage model which you see on the on the right side uh, of the screen and i have shared the complete paper with you it is from a from my colleague here in australia and uh, it's a pretty interesting model it says that uh, you have to have two levels of of activity one is the e moderating so you know e moderation is obviously the the online moderation uh, kind of a stuff and parallel is the technical support so now as an academic we have to think that we would not be able to deliver our services alone we will need to have the technical support and if we are able to really get the right technical support only then the online delivery would work really well now it's a fascinating model it's been cited very well it's a very recent model but I would I would recommend all of you to spend more time on it uh, because I've sent you the full paper. I wouldn't spend more time on this, but it's a five stage model. It looks at access and motivation at level one, online socialization at level two, information exchange at level three, knowledge construction at level level four and development at number at level five. Right. And in both the cases, you need the e moderation as well as the technical support. It's a uh, well. I I I use this model with my staff here, and it it really works very well. Okay, coming to some of my quick learnings. But before I come to that learning, let me give you some context, and let me give you the rapid deployment strategies which we which we used. So what you see here is our on the right side is our pictures of fifth of March, and. Uh, on the bottom, what you see is one of our O days. We call it orientation days. As you can see, it is totally not socially distanced. And, uh, and we are not following almost any rules which we are now supposed to follow. So our life was pretty straightforward on 5th of March. And uh, things totally changed on 16th of March. Because on 16th of March, Australian government declared that we are preparing to stop. So we were told that you are preparing to stop. You should start preparing to stop. So we were given almost a couple of weeks in which we were supposed to stop. And we had started the classes. So you can imagine if 5th March was, uh, was an O day, orientation day, and 16th March was when Australian government told us that you have to prepare to stop in two weeks time. We had finished two, of, two weeks of class. Everything was going well. Uh, we were very comfortable with what was happening. But then suddenly we were told that 14 days move everything online. Okay. And then boom, you know, suddenly, oh my God, what to do? So what I'm listing here are the steps which we which we followed. First, we started with assessment. We didn't worry about the delivery much. 
Why? Because we knew that there would be some Zoom or some Google Talk or some version which can handle that. But assessment was a big challenge. So we converted all assessments into online compatible assessments, which included elimination of all end exams where possible and converting it into the alternative assessment structures. We used uh, backward design. In fact, um, yeah, there is a lot of literature on, on, on backward design. So I would, I would uh, recommend all of you to go through some, uh, go through the backward design literature. It's all about looking at it from other way around. So, you know, usually a lecturer will design the content first and assessment later. We, we went the other way around. We went and first designed the assessment and then, then, and then modified the content to suit the assessment. Then, yes, we had to decide how to deliver. So, you know, we went with Zoom with our own logic and things like that, but, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't spend time on that right now. If you have got any questions, we'll talk about it. So we decided on the delivery mode. The, the central focus was on engagement. Engagement, engagement, engagement. Clear? What did we do for engagement? I'll come, uh, I'll, I'll come when, when we talk about it. And then we had a regular feedback. So we had every week feedback on what was the attendance, what was the participation, what was the engagement, what can we do better next week to improve it. And we have been doing that since the day we went online till today. Remember, we are in we are currently in week 10 and Australia has a 12 week semester. So we still have two weeks to go in terms of our semester. There was no week which was lost. There was no week which was rescheduled or changed because we were going online. We moved everything online from one week after 15th of, uh, sorry, 16th of March, right? Okay, so what worked? And uh, from my personal point of view, based on my learning, what is important? Now, remember, these are based on my personal experiences. This may work everywhere. This may not work everywhere. First of all, lecturing is no longer an option. So the whole idea that we will go in, we will run 29 PowerPoint slides just doesn't work. There. So we adopted a 20 plus 20 plus 20 rule. So 20 plus 20 plus 20 rule is that 20 minutes lecturer would talk, 20 minutes there will be an activity, and 20 minutes there will be question and answer followed by a break. So if the question answers only last for 10 minutes, then you would have a 10 minute break. If question answer lasts 20 minutes, you, you adjust the breaks accordingly. So no lecturing at all. Or even if you were to do lecturing, lecturing should not exceed 20 minutes. And I am mindful that I am about to reach 20, but I will I will finish it up quickly. Uh, second is exams won't won't always be possible. Like in our case, the we don't think so that some, the exams would be possible this semester. We really don't know whether that will be possible next semester or not. So we have to really think about innovative, authentic. Um, but accurate assessments, which really assesses people's learning outcome without keeping students in the in the exam environment. Uh, teaching online doesn't mean learning online. So I am currently talking doesn't mean that you are really listening to me. Some of you may be doing other tasks. Some may be uh, having some other distractions and so on. So we have to be very mindful that I am teaching online doesn't mean that somebody on the other end is learning online. You know, that that may happen later, that may not happen and so on. And that's the biggest challenge. Platform and standardization are very important. Remember, I never realized that learning management system would be this important. So learning management system as well as teaching platform, both are important. Um, and um, and we use Moodle, like probably you guys also use Moodle. But, you know, and, and standardization is important. Remember, if... Swati Madam's Moodle page looks incredibly different than my Moodle page, um, then students get to very different versions of it. And that's where we as lecturers have to work with the technical team to make it standardized and work. Uh, support services are more important than ever. Uh, remember your IT services, your online library, your data integration people, who were, who were sitting in one corner on a campus 
are now at the center of of the activity purely because everybody is accessing them more and more there so you know if you are doing online if you have to do online please make sure that these people are appropriately resourced and strengthened because they will they will receive a lot more queries you know this is working this is not working and so on and so forth uh talking is still important in fact there is no better alternative to talk so you should talk to students how do we talk we have virtual phone and text check ins so we have a virtual check in where people can drop in just like it's an office hour you know which we keep that i'm available from 10 to 11 if you have any help you stay available uh students sometimes come sometimes don't come if they don't come we phone them we have given staff uh, private number phones so that they can talk to students if they have to and their phones their phone numbers are never recorded in in the in the students phone book uh we do text check ins we do sms check ins and stuff like that uh empathy is important remember i know that uh, we are we are all great academics and we want students to learn and learn really well but sometimes you will have to be empathetic you will have to you will have to allow adjustments in what they are doing and what we are doing and you will have to be slightly flexible with that and uh before i conclude the last part is super important that please remember that lecture and student wellness is important and i'm 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 putting lecturer here first because we are at the front end and uh, and we i i believe that we are as important in corona virus times as a nurse is or as a doctor is so we are front line your wellness as a lecturer students wellness is important so make sure that you don't send out an email to anyone over the weekend or on a public holiday you do not respond to emails after your working hours are done these are super important things these are small but very important things if students want to respond in the night because they are working let them respond you you know there is an inclination to respond as soon as you receive an email please don't do it it was all right i do it and i i always do it but not during these times when we are increasingly under pressure and we are spending more and more time in front of the screen and computer so take care of your wellness take care of students wellness and hopefully we will all be very successful in this all right so that is more than 20 minutes unfortunately but uh, i would be i am now open to any questions if you have thank you dr hardik it was really uh, enlightening quite a few points are been covered uh, so i'll request faculty members to ask questions if they have any sir uh, good evening sir i am dr good Hira evening Lata. sir sir just give me one second i am trying to i am trying to do the okay so now you don't see my screen right yes Yes. Yeah. Okay. Please, please go Sir, on. My, my, uh, I want your suggestion on how to keep the student engaged and motivated during this online teaching, sir. Correct. So, um, well, there are there are a lot of strategies. The first strategy is that uh, you should stay available and stay connected. So you know, tell student that I'm here if you need any help. um just like you would do in a physical class classroom settings um engagement would drop a bit so you know if you if the if the engagement drops a bit don't feel disheartened the reality and the data and the research globally says that when students go online abruptly like what they are doing in a in an uh, in a in a blended environment the engagements go down so engagement will go down but uh, try and make sure that you you use multimedia things like videos and um, and and you know engaging things as much as you could um, and uh, do the check ins i have i believe that check ins are very very important talk to students ask them questions um, and uh, and 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 you know ask them questions beyond the beyond your uh, content classroom content and uh, 
and yeah that's how that's something which we all have to try and do it it, it also depends on student motivation also and you said that how to keep students motivated it's a big challenge uh, but i'm very sure i've been to your campus your students are incredibly motivated and 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 the advantage which you guys have is that they are all master student so there is a significant um you know internal motivation in master students compared to undergraduate students and we here deal with a large bunch of undergraduate students which where where motivation is even bigger challenge so yeah please do it so use variety of simulations use um, use as many new things as you can okay thank you sir yeah uh, hello sir yes, yes yes sir good evening sir sir evening. i want to know how to engage students in asynchronous mode of teaching sorry i couldn't get your question uh, when the students are not face to face with you in a meeting or in a class mm -hmm. and you are mm -hmm. sending them content and then they are working on it so how to engage them yeah so uh, well first of all your instruction has to be video instruction where possible uh, no written instruction because when you when you give very lengthy written instructions uh, students usually uh, you know get lost in this so what we have done is that for every assessment so imagine in one course what you call course we call unit here so for in one unit if there are three assessments then lecturer will create three videos explaining those assessments there so just don't put a bunch of paper on student and tell them that okay read this digest this and do this activity uh, your instruction should be uh, should be video driven so that they feel that no i'm 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 kind of being uh, taught or or assessed by by somebody who is in flesh and blood so create a video short videos um doesn't need to be professional i know that we are all concerned about the quality of the videos and professional videos uh, if you try and make it as professional as you can but if you can't make it beyond certain don't worry about it but definitely make a video and send it to students so videos are a great way of engagement uh, break the task into small chunks if the assessment was all about a large report of 2000 words tell tell students that now you know this 2000 words let's do it in a in a weekly basis so if you are supposed to submit a 2000 word report at the end of week four let's let's do 500 in week one let's do 500 in week two 500 in week three and 500 in week four now that doesn't mean that you have to mark all of them right so don't think like uh you know i'm i'm trying to tell you to mark everything over a over you know extended over an extended period of time but you know if you if you break the tasks into small chunks students would feel more motivated you know rather than writing something which is 2000 3000 words large assessment why not to give them in small assessments divide the mark into sub into the sub categories so you know if the whole assessment is worth 35 marks tell them that you know first two sections are 10 marks and submit it to me uh, next two sections are another 10 marks and submit it to me so students feel rewarded at 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 different levels now that is very very important Sir, my question. Mm -hmm. I am Dr. Vilas Kulkarni. Mm -hmm. I am visiting faculty to this uh, STEAM Institute, uh, Simba Sims. Mm -hmm. uh, my one question is that uh, how to compete the as a visiting faculty because we are from industry, we are mm -hmm. not from academics, and we are not conversant with the new technology that much, which is related with the academics. So Correct. we are having my ourselves. I am a senior age person. I am sixty plus. But we are very mm -hmm. interested to learn this new technology and to give whatever enriched knowledge we are having of industry mm -hmm. to our lovely students. Now, how to get the confidence, motivation to ourselves first so that we will give um, more motivation to our uh, nice students of the institute. Because when theoretically in the class we are teaching, we are having excellent uh, case studies and knowledge and rich experience. We are sharing that. 
but now in this corona or in this virtual classes that was my question what is the fate of us uh, we are very interested to give our knowledge and how to give that this is my one of the question to you sir yeah uh, well first thing first uh, look your knowledge remains relevant you know whatever way you deliver so you know don't uh, don't feel like that you know your knowledge is valuable your knowledge is your currency and uh, and uh, you know you would continue to do well with that now coming to the question of how to make myself adaptable to the technological environment um, i think if you you know if you are joining me here on this platform right now i think you are pretty all right with it because i took 10 minutes to understand this platform before this class you know i had to talk to swati madam and 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 work out how to make it work so you are already there uh if you have some detailed interest i would be happy to suggest you some resources which you can quickly learn means they are not long courses but they are short you know kind of two day three day four day activities which you can do and which will help you get updated with this remember by going online we are only changing the medium the message is not changed so your message remains absolutely relevant medium is changing yes but the importance of medium is up to the medium so don't uh, don't feel that you can't you know you can't compete or you can't uh, kind of uh, rejig your your capabilities absolutely you can do that thank you sir yeah. Yeah. dr hardik i have a question mm -hmm. um how do we engage those students who are otherwise available for the sessions but in between they are not able to connect uh, your synchronous sessions because of network connectivity or other reason so mm -hmm. how do we fill that gap because the student has attended first two sessions and in between two sessions he or she couldn't attend and then later on he came he or she came after those two sessions so how do yeah. we connect them right so i'll give you uh, i'll give you the uh, procedure which we follow here um, it's a bit of a lengthy process but it has so far worked so we use uh, very similar to what you guys are using here we use zoom and we record everything and the recording is made available to the students you know as soon as the it's being done so we put it put the link on lms and students can access it but at the same time we also create a 10 minute recap video so at the immediately after the session we create a 10 minute video of of what i taught in the in the whole two hour or three hour lecture and i'll do a 10 minute video on that and put it up also so there will be two resources if student is time poor which a lot of students or a lot of international students here are because they are working to survive and things like that they can watch a 10 minute video um, and if they are really interested in doing more they can watch the full video now what is important here is the analytics you need to get the data from your lms team about which student has spent how much time on which page now moodle gives you that data very easily so you know you will have to hire probably somebody to to crunch the data if somebody has spent less time or more time in fact less time we are more concerned about less time then you know the lecturer gets notified that this student has not spent even five minutes on this week's content as soon as you have a situation like that you approach the student that do you need any help um, uh, do you need any help or do you you know how can i help you and things like that so you know try and uh, try and track the behavior of student over lms how much time do they spend on which item which which link on on your lms get the data of that and uh, and approach the student based on that data student may feel a bit agitated for the first time when you approach them like this uh, that do you need any help in say week five content or say motivations content in organizational behavior chapter five student would be student would be shocked you know that oh why why are you or how are you so specific about it but we can be this specific about it purely because um because we know from our lms data that student hasn't hasn't visited that that week's content and that's why we are concerned about it 
Yeah. Yes, that's that's great. Uh, I think uh, Professor Sukhatme has a question that he want uh, mm -hmm. you to elaborate on twenty plus twenty plus twenty strategy. Right. So, well, this is this is I have created this strategy. So, twenty plus twenty plus twenty is that you don't talk more than twenty minutes. You have a competent activity which follows your talk, which is which is incredibly mm -hmm. connected to what you talked. And that activity should be worth 20 minutes. Now, a lot of a lot of time we uh, we use the publishers' material and the activities which publishers provide. Uh, quite often, these activities are great. Okay, so you can you can just kind of take it and use it. Uh, but sometimes you may have to modify the modify it a bit. You know, in a way that remove certain questions to make it fit into 20 minute kind of a kind of activity schedule. So give them that activity which is for 20 minutes uh in zoom we we use breakout rooms so you know there are there is a possibility of creating variety of breakout rooms so it's a group activity just like in class we can say that okay five of you in, will be in group a and five of you will be in group b and things like that you create the breakout rooms give them the activity you go into each of the rooms to check what students are doing keep on doing that and then ask any questions and then make it open house and then take a break right 20 plus 20 plus five minutes of question is also good enough okay then then take 10 minutes of break 15 minutes of break and then again at the top of the hour again start teaching yeah so yes. that that is what i call 20 plus 20 plus 20 now it it works it it may work it may not work but one thing is certain that attention span has reduced so significantly that even 20 minutes looks like ages sometimes you know so definitely no more than 20 minutes miss right. uh, smita has a question yeah mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon sir this is smita here uh, i yes. just modified my question because what you just said was very relevant to what i was thinking about the breakout rooms so i wanted mm -hmm. to know what has been your experience with the breakout rooms uh, my sense, because I've been thinking about it, is that I, I of course, have to do it because that's the way I like to conduct my class. But will it be increasingly losing control of students? Like in a normal class environment, when they are into groups, yes, it gets chaotic sometimes because they, you know, they cross talk and they talk amongst themselves about other things also. But as a faculty, you're able to control that. In case there is suddenly you want to address something, solve a common problem, you're suddenly able to address everybody and that problem gets sorted out collectively at that level. So what has been your experience of do's and don'ts about breakout rooms? If you can enlighten me on that. Yeah, well, good. Thank, thanks. It's a, it's a very good question. And I have, I have used breakout rooms for past six weeks now. So I can, I can give you firsthand experience. Uh, and I'm only, I, I'm only used to Zoom breakout rooms. I really don't know what is the equivalent of it in Google and other, other platforms. But Zoom breakout rooms work perfectly fine. Uh, there are two ways you can uh, you can make a permanent breakout room so you can assign students in a in a in a breakout room and that breakout room would stay 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 there with that particular zoom meeting or you can make a dynamic breakout rooms each uh, each week now breakout rooms work perfectly fine uh, you can join any breakout room and you can leave any breakout rooms so what i usually do is that it's just like in the class if we have created four or five groups we would walk walk to the group and ask questions you know how are you doing any help and things like that and we keep on moving from one group to another to another exactly the same way lecturer can join a breakout room and leave the breakout room and if lecturer wants to uh, communicate something with the whole class there is a tab which which allows you to type and uh, and send the conversation to the whole class you know so it will go to all different breakout rooms so my personal suggestion is that breakout rooms have been a savior to us in australia our class time is three hours so three hours is a long time right and if there was no breakout room trust me it would be impossible to survive for all these weeks so breakout rooms are are absolute blessings they work in fact they work exceptionally well shy students who are who are who usually don't like to speak in front of a large audience group would be very open in a in a breakout room 
at the same time a, as soon as you put them in breakout room and you visit the breakout room you would be able to see who are the students who are there but not there so there but not there is that they have clicked on the link and then they have disappeared you know they are they look online to us in the class but they are actually not not participating so the attendance versus participation discussion which i was having so breakout rooms work perfectly fine so if i've correctly understood is this what you said that in the breakout room it is possible to know who are the students who participated because my understanding of the breakout room is that this is going to be like a group discussion amongst themselves and unless uh, not, yeah look i usually what i do is that i put up a general case study okay, okay and then i tell them to discuss in the groups all right hmm. and so case study remains the same for the whole class okay right and the discussion is in different groups in the different breakout rooms so that's not so it's not unique activity for each group it's uh, one activity which the whole class is doing it's just that everyone is doing it you know in different groups all right so okay yeah, yeah. thank you uh, so one more question sorry yeah yes Mika. Yeah. Um, and so my question is that uh, now, given the change scenario, just like we are going to experience this online teaching for the first time, our students are going to sit across for like seven, eight hours and try to learn online. So uh, is it a good idea to try and get we, uh, so we give them assignments? Every subject gives them assignments stipulated by the university. Is it a good idea to get part of that assignment done in the class? Uh, because I'm not sure after say seven, eight hours of sitting in front of their computer, will they still get together to complete group assignments? So is it a mm. good idea to plan that way that in the breakout rooms, at least they're able to finish part of it. And I feel that once they get the hang of it, they may get interested in completing it. No, I, I, I completely agree. Completely agree. Get things done from students when they are, when they are committedly with you. So I would strongly recommend that you redesign your assessments in a way that a part of it is done in the class. Uh, this will also increase the attendance and participation. And this would also reduce the load, uh, load beyond the classroom. You know, so it's a, it's it definitely, yes, my, my hundred percent. Yes. And when we designed our assessments, we, we definitely, um, use that, you know, that, try and get as many assessment elements done as possible in the class so it's a it's a very good idea please please do that thank you sir thank you yeah. professor lalit has a question mm -hmm. oh. so you can ask or i'll read it he has written that uh, his question is Related to student anxiety and students feeling uh, feeling technology technologically challenged in the current scenario, and if uh, yeah, if you have any suggestion with respect to that, so students uh, anxiety is there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, so, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Lalit, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, Doctor Hardik, thanks for the excellent presentation and the FDP. Um, a lot of our students have student anxiety current considering the current scenario, and at the same time. There's another question which is related to the fact that a lot of students feel technologically challenged in terms of the usage of uh, LMS and other online platforms. Uh, we would like to know what are your tips or any suggestions on this? Uh, well, uh, thanks. Uh, so I'll, I'll handle it two ways. One, the technological anxiety and second is general anxiety. So let me address the technological anxiety first. So. Uh, I understand it's a whole new learning curve uh, for everyone, for you, me, for students, everyone. Um, what we do is that we try and keep things as simple as possible. Uh, and we try and standardize things as much as possible. So uh, imagine a student is doing four courses. One is done by Swati Madam, one is done by you, and one, done, one is done by me, or say two are done by me. What we do is that we make sure that in LMS, assessment instructions are exactly at the same place for all the courses. Uh, course outline, we call it unit outline, is exactly at the same place. We have tried to standardize that 
every assessment one in every course would be worth a particular a particular percentage so there is a there is a standardization there so that student feels the predictability you know so student feels that okay if in swati madam's course i have understood that this is where the information is the assessment one is going to be 20 marks even in my my course it is going to be exactly like the same here yeah, so we are trying to give students as much predictability as possible so that clearly means that a lot of lms development has to be done in collaboration with the with the technical team you know because uh, otherwise our course outlines are going to be different our way of writing assessment instructions are different some of us uh, prefer to give a lot of information some of us prefer to give very limited information uh, so you know where possible standardization can make sure that student receive the similar information across the board at an institutional level and that really helps them reduce the anxiety when it comes to general anxiety uh look it's true like say for example i have always taken an exam exams are predictable i have to go in the class take the exam and do it and forget it uh while in assessment i have to upload it and then you know the plagiarism could be high so i have to rework or my lecturer's comments i have to incorporate so there is a there is an added element of anxiety which gets associated because i am moving away from a known patterns of assessment to a slightly unknown pattern of assessment so that's where our role as a lecturer comes in and i said empathy is very important if you think that student is struggling give her additional time give her additional resources give her additional uh, support uh, i know we are all time poor we have to publish we have to do all other kind of stuff but you know these are the times when our students need us our students are quick learners trust me one semester and second semester they will not ask these questions in fact we have observed from week 4 to week 10 we we used to receive 10 times more questions in the first two weeks one student know what they are supposed to do they will be you know they will be on a they will be on a clear path so you know it's a it's a it's a bit of extra effort from us but we if we try and put in i'm sure um yeah i'm sure they would be they would be out of anxiety thanks dr Thank you. So Professor Subhatme has a, a question. He's saying that he's teaching marketing and he often use storytelling uh, of live companies with respect to concepts. So his uh, question is that will he be able to, will this work in the online mode? Oh, it, it absolutely would work. Look, uh, all good teachers are good storytellers so you know your storytelling would absolutely work the only thing is that the stories will now have to be uh, slightly more compact than than what it would be in the class because in the class uh, you can see the immediate feedback you know so if i'm if i'm teaching in the class and if i see that students are getting disengaged i can i can change the gears but here you know i may not be able to change the gears so you know we'll have to keep it uh, short and sharp but storytelling uh, works and and has to work. That's that's the heart of that's the heart of our business. So please keep doing it. <coughs> that's nice. Uh, Professor Sani is asking, uh, what is the strength of your class on an average uh, every yeah. day? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, the strength of uh, our class, my class, ranges from. Uh, seven to 60 uh, but uh, the median class size would be 25 so we rarely have large classes but we do have in this semester i'm teaching one class which is 64 students yeah so uh, i think sir has a follow-up question does this lead to any engagement related limitations yeah it does it, defi yeah. It, it definitely does the if there were no breakout rooms, my 60 student class would be an absolute disaster. You know, uh, my class would become a fish market. So in a, in a, in a 60 student class, I, I rely incredibly on breakout rooms. Uh, while, in, 
well when it comes to smaller classes yeah breakout rooms help me but they are not the essential thing but in a class of 60 breakout rooms are everything i in a class of 60 i only talk for 10 to 15 minutes then there is a then there is an activity then everybody gets back in the main class then i ask questions then there is a break second leg starts another 15 minutes of talking a detailed lengthy activity which is demanding which won't which which pushes them to ask questions to me as i as i go from one breakout room to another and then again everyone gets back to the class the common class and then again break and so on so you know yeah you are right it it you know the the whole design of the class uh, delivery the, the design of the delivery would change based on the based on the size of the class uh, I, actually i have a question uh, with, in continuation with i had asked before so when mm -hmm. we are sharing recordings to the students uh, am i audible yes i you are done. go on yeah so when we are sharing recordings to the students uh, does this happen that uh, I know that the uh, recording is going to come after you no know, after uh, after an hour or maybe by evening. So I'll not yeah. attend sessions today yeah. or maybe uh, for next one week. Yeah, it does happen. It does happen. You can't uh, you really can't stop that. Um, you know, look, uh, I have to admit that Australia has very different attendance policies than in, what India has. And I've been here for six years. So my mind has totally changed so i don't think of attendance at all i i take it as a given that no student will come because we don't have attendance as as a requirement of of for anything we don't even record the attendance we record the attendance and student services send the sms's and stuff like that but uh, it's not a legal or mandatory requirement but uh, what you said is important and i have seen that happening that students would not attend because they know the recording is coming and uh, even the short brief of the whole lecture is coming uh, but well that is what it is you know we have to we have to live with that <laughs> sir one question yes yes shall i ask yes please yes sir uh, sir uh, i'm teaching uh, precisely a subject called law it is a mm -hmm. business law, labor law, like that subject I am teaching for the students of HR. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was teaching physically in the colleges or institutes earlier, uh, this subject is very dry. So I used to see the body language of the student and accordingly I used to share some practical cases which were happened in the various industry and as well as I, when I was working as a general manager, HRD personnel, how I practically handled that case. So the yeah. lecture was, I uh, seeing the body language, I was making the lecture very interesting. And believe me, the students were, who are those not ready to attend, they were totally available. Not a one single student was absent and they were giving excellent feedback to the management. Now my problem is there now as this new technology, I have to teach this subject being a very dry subject. And plus, this is having uh, these case studies or this thing, how I can be able to make my lecture interesting so that student will be able to um, understand it and my feedback also will be positive. Yeah, well, very good question. And uh, yours is a very fascinating subject to teach online. We are, I'm currently before this, before this uh, workshop, I had, a, I had a meeting with my lecturer who lecturer of law who always had an open book exam and we were discussing about how to handle that situation anyway so law is a fascinating subject in itself um, uh, there are and one is the general suggestion before i come specifically to law uh, if you are giving a large case study which i have seen that in india usually people give very large case studies case studies which are worth 10 pages 15 pages um, in Australia, it is a big no-no. We don't give very large case studies. If there is a large case study, we always make sure that there is a complimentary video which you record and put that along with the case study. Because you know, asking a student to read a 20-page case study is a lot of burden here. So uh, my recommendation to you would be that use smaller cases um in the online delivery smaller cases work well work fantastically well if you are going to use large case studies 
divide it in the groups beforehand so imagine that if there are five groups in the in the class uh, if there are five people in group you know you say that okay person a will read first two sections person b will read three four sections four five you know we'll have to be slightly like a school teacher here and why we will have to be like a school teacher here because we really don't get the instant feedback like 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 the sir just said we don't get the instant feedback so we'll have to be slightly more directive in terms of what we want them to do so my suggestion would be use small cases uh, use discussion as much as possible avoid lecturing because lecturing just would not work so break the, so break the class in a, in a, you know put them into the breakout rooms give them small case studies and and try with that i know law is one of the one of the most challenging if not the challenging unit to handle in online uh, accounting units that even more challenging than law to handle but uh, but you know uh, try this and it would work if you are giving a larger case study give your video attachment to the case study so that so that students can watch your video understand the context understand what you want them to do so that you know they are clear with it because we we know that we have given all the instructions still students want us to explain that so you know kind of using these kind of combinations i trust me i don't have an answer to that that question which is proven but we are doing currently exactly that we have commercial law and business law running this semester and they are definitely challenging units in terms of engagement thank you sir thank you very much yeah thanks a lot uh, i think professor lalit has one more question so you yeah, can ask uh, talk, yeah thank you sarthi dr sarthi dr hardik uh, the current methodology of teaching is it similar to the flipped classroom methodology uh, which was uh, at the start when we spoke about uh, e learning or is this the current methodology which we are discussing uh, a fine tuned version of what we do the traditional way but with electronic tools uh, i wouldn't call this a flipped classroom a uh, flipped classroom puts the onus of learning on the learner so in a flipped classroom you would uh, you know you would want students to have gone through the material beforehand and then lead the learning from there so i think uh, people who are teaching online uh, almost all universities when they are currently talking about online i think they are not talking about the flipped classroom um, it's a it's a modified version of uh, of a of a lecturer driven or an instructor driven teaching methodology so it's not flipped classroom from 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 my from my personal point of view because flip classroom is all about learner maturity and uh, driving learning from the learner we are not talking about this this is this is a traditional learning uh, done in a very different uh, access environment and methodological environment thanks dr thank you uh, ms smita has a question i think yes yes uh, sir i have one more question here now we, mm -hmm. last few days we've been discussing about the challenges in online teaching and learning um, however it's also a good idea to play by the strengths you know if there are any so if you could highlight a couple of strengths of uh, teaching online that way maybe we can take advantage of those strengths and you know plan our um, our subjects accordingly uh, so you so strength of what strength of this method of teaching yes, method. yes sir. on online teaching strength of yeah. online teaching if it yeah is. yeah good no 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 look uh, again contexts are very different but in australia as i told you we don't have attendance requirements so we had incredibly poor attendance so lecturers will go into a class of 60 i'm talking face to face and they will have 20 students and they will come out disheartened you know they would have prepared for 2 hours for that for that great case study for that great activity and then they just get one third of the student so the the number one benefit is that it provides incredible width of access so people can access the content people can join from anywhere um and there is a complete level playing field in terms of the access uh second strength is 
that uh, you know you should play based on student strength so social media is student strength uh inter inter student communication is student strength so i think the best way to make most of this is to is to really play through student strength try and try and add social media try and add a post and comment and uh, if the comment has what it takes give them marks for the comments and also try and play innovatively uh, which you now can because you know it's all online the barriers are gone you know the traditional teaching and learning quality control people who were who were standing on your head i don't know whether they stand on your head at your institute or not but at our institute they're always standing on our head that this is not accepted this is not accepted you know there is incredible flexibility there so try and play with the strength of it if you play with the strength of the students which is social media excess and things like that they would thoroughly enjoy it so three key things one strength uh, uh, the first strength is the excess which everyone has second uh, trust me students are way more comfortable with online learning than what we think they are comfortable with they are you know yeah they question that why am i paying so much of money to do something which is online than what i am doing face to face and that i discussed about the institutional challenge but you know as a as a lecturer the reality is that you know they are they are they have an advantage they have a methodological advantage technological advantage over us so if you play with that they would be super happy about it okay thank you very much sir thank you uh, so there is one question from uh, mr badriyu vachrajani uh, i'm sorry okay. if i have mispronounced the name uh, he says uh, how long this online teaching will take to establish fully in india um uh, it well look these shocks have speeded up the the adoption so you know the open universities if you look at the open universities uk uh, if you look at coursera edx they have been they have been offering online things for for almost now seven eight years mit open course where you know i'm sure a lot of you would be using the references and contents from there so they've been online for a lot of time but coronavirus has pushed the whole world to really think about about really adopting it to a lot of extent so my guess is that uh, if the internet access is good online adoption in india uh, can be as good as anywhere else in the world because we know that data in india is cheap a lot of people have smartphones if we really create the right content at the right price india could could be actually adopting online learning way faster than what australia or or uk or or usa would do yeah, that's great thank you dr naval has a question uh, he's saying that how do we maintain uniformity across all divisions because we have five divisions and one faculty teaches five divisions so and yeah. how feasible it is to maintain that uniformity a uh, good question we also have a very similar situation now i don't know what do you mean by division we we have uh, we have sections we call it sections i think you guys also right. probably mean yes, the same is sections same. isn't it yeah. so yes. a one a one course has say 400 students and then they are divided in certain numbers and the same lecturer teaches all of them is that is that what you what you mean by divisions yes exactly yeah so well we have uh, the moodle gives you an access that you can create groups so your moodle administrator can uh, create divisional groups so you as a lecturer can post things which which go which can be accessed by all members of the of the class that is all five divisions and you can put specific content which can only be accessed by certain divisions now we use this very often uh purely because you know there are certain divisions where you have students who are performing lower than the average so lecturer may have to put more content will have to provide more access more videos more support in one division and not in all the divisions so moodle gives you that kind of a flexibility to play with yes it's a it's a bit of more work to do for a lecturer but um, but as i told you you know we we hardly have any other choice these days Oh, Swati, ma'am, can I add to this? Yes, yes, sir. 
so professor navel here um, yes so, so uh, just adding to that so would you recommend a uh, uniformity or would it be recommended that you know in terms of the teaching per se and the ped pedagogy that's being used do you maintain uniformity or do you keep it diverse for divisions or sections uh, so there are two elements one is the uniformity so uniform uniformity is important and uniformity has to be maintained but then as the course progresses the lecturer would realize or lecturer would 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 appreciate that this particular division requires more assistance then that kind of a division gets some extra resources but uniformity is super important uniformity of assessment universe uniformity of information access uniformity of words number of words of assessment these are all non negotiable so you know if you have somebody who gives 30 marks for 3000 word project and somebody gives 20 marks for a 3000 word project it cannot be accepted purely because student would immediately notice that i am getting two variation of marks uh, from the same amount of effort which I am putting in. So my recommendation to you would be that create a volume of learning, volume of assessment, and then equally divide it across the across all the units or across all the courses and maintain the uniformity as a base. But if certain divisions require more, you you know we are not we are not uh, we are not stubborn, we are flexible. Uh, so, so I'm sorry, I'm just uh, elaborating on this one, but um, so assessments fine. Yes, uniformity, in fact, ought to be maintained when it comes to assessments. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about, let's say, for example, I'm taking a session on introduction, organizational behavior, and I'm uh, citing a particular illustration or example related to organizational behavior implications. Then should I should that illustration be uniform across the five sections or is it okay if it varies that's no no it should be it should be uniform okay okay thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. it should be uniform but uh, imagine that in two weeks time you realize that the that the illustrations which you have taken are are little bit too difficult for division d right or division or students in division d take more time to comprehend the illustration which a division a student would comprehend in 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 five minutes then you will have to make slight additions and modifications to that particular particular division yes sure sure thank you thank you yeah thank you Naval, sir. Uh, so we have a question from professor sukhatmi she teaches uh, cyber law and uh, ipr she's asking uh, mm -hmm. could you share your experience with identifying elaborating and sometimes mentoring students without any eye contact and no clue of body language or all? Uh, well, very good point. We have a large team of, um, of staff who does mentoring with students. Uh, first of all, uh, Zoom and, uh, and Skype or Google Hangout uh, does suffice a bit to an extent the, the missing of the physical contact. So I would suggest that where possible, you should have a Zoom meeting or a Skype chat or, a, or Zoom or, or whatever or whatever face-to-face -face platform you can use. So where possible, use that. Where, you, where it is not always possible, um, you can use phone and text. Uh, but uh, yeah, you definitely, your mentorship approach has to change and uh, you would have limited feeds from people's body language and we have to we have to accept that and modify the approach but it hasn't been a massive problem to us we haven't faced a massive problem in fact we have just like attendance we have seen a spike in people who take mentorship because previously they had to come to campus to get the mentorship now you know they can just click a link and 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 the mentor would be available on the other hand and they can very easily chat so i we have noticed that there is an there is a spike in the in the uptake of the mentorship also that's that's great to know uh, professor malasane has a question ma'am can you ask or you want me to read Okay, uh, I'll read it. 
so uh, mm. ma'am is saying a teacher who is great in a physical classroom may not become great with online delivery overnight so students feedback would be based more on the teacher's ability to manipulate technology to his benefits isn't it um uh, isn't it so it's a question i guess um it's a the, an <laughs> the answer is yes and no look students don't judge you based on whether you have um, look, well look first thing first if you create the content and if there is a good if there is a good coordination between your lms team and uh, the lecturer then a lot of and then there is a and there are organizational supports to it then you know the the content and the technical elements of the how an lms uh, launch that's what the word which we use so lms home page and things like that look can be handled very easily by technical people so that's not a big issue and students don't judge you based on your technical capability it's ultimately look students go there as i told you uh, message is still important these are all tools now yes if you are great at it well it may have 5 7% impact but ultimately the the student feedback would be based on the knowledge which you have provided yes there will be an additional element of support so when everyone is online students value support more than they value when things are face to face so yes in terms of support you know there will be an additional step which people will have to take so i may not have provided that support in face to face but i have to provide that support online but fundamentally we are all teachers we all like to support students so i i personally don't feel uh, it as a problem at our institute we do not keep any question in student evaluation which talk about lecturers technical capability i have just designed and collected 400 feedbacks this week there is no question there are questions on whether they like the platform or not whether they like the zoom or not but there is no question which talks about did you did the lecturer handle the technical aspects well no those questions were never there okay and that's great uh, answer that was, that was very heartening to know <laughs> <laughs> and i think to a certain extent dr archana's question is also answered over here so uh, we'll take one question from smita ma'am yeah you have a question i think yeah so that's my final question at least for sir uh, sir now that uh, you have this experience of teaching online offline both um, uh, and given the fact that attendance is not a compulsion for your students so maybe asking this question from students perspective may not be relevant so based on your understanding of i mean based on your experience and your colleagues experience do you want your students back in a physical classroom you know really happy that very happy that the whole thing is online so that gives a clear idea of you know the overall picture what do people really think that really it's been a wonderful experience of having them online or that no 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 um, i wish they could come back to the classroom what is it like uh, yeah well look personally i believe that i wish they come back to the classroom uh, purely the reason is that not that online is inferior now i i i used to believe okay i used to believe before couple of years that online is inferior now in past two years i have i have changed my opinion online is not inferior but if we have to go online it needs to be positioned very differently now when we gave admissions to the students a year ago or two years ago we promised a face to face learning right so we we sold something else and we can't you know it can't be that box is being opened and something else comes out so if we would have sold online which has its own pricing problems you know so you know you can't get more money for online because you know there is no infrastructure being used there is no physical library being used so student would ask for a bargain so uh if we would have solved the problem program as an online i would have had no problem with it i do not want them to be on campus but i want my students to be on campus because we sold them a face to face program mm, yeah oh, that's, that's thank correct. correct yeah uh dr archana has a question hello yes ma'am yeah very good afternoon sir thanks for such a lovely session 
Uh, so uh, I'm a little tense because this is going to be my first teaching uh, in this institution, first teaching semester. So uh, is there a difference in the impact a teacher can, uh, you know, actually have in the live teaching and uh, online teaching? And what would be the difference between the two if I have to measure the impact? Say, for example, if a faculty has a feedback of 9 on 10 when he goes to the class and teaches live, so is it so that the difference is going to be a seven or eight uh, when he goes online or there is no measurable uh, differential impact on the same? Um, I, I really don't have too much of data to share with you on this impact. Uh, but what I can tell you is that, the, and this is based on my personal opinion, the impact wouldn't be significant. Uh, impact wouldn't be significant because students still come to you, whether they come physically or online, to to get the knowledge which you have, to to get the engagement which you can engage. Whether it is face, even you know, we all agree that even face to face is about engagement, right? So you know, we know that whether it is online or face to face. Now you can't go on for a lecturing for forty five minutes or fifty minutes. It doesn't work. In 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 twenty twenty, it doesn't work in any environment. So I don't see that there will be a massive engage, uh, massive uh, change in the impact. Uh, your approach will have to change. And if you change your approach well, then probably who knows your, you know, a lecturer who had seven or eight out of 10, now probably get nine or 10 out of 10 because they, they use the right approach. So I don't, I don't think so that you should enter the classroom or a zoom session with that kind of a mindset uh, but yeah if you if you if you kind of retool yourself a bit and use the right approach you know who knows you could be nine out of ten or you were nine out of ten in face in face to face now you are nine out of ten even in online that's a great achievement okay thank you so much thanks a lot uh, you have answered quite a lot of questions and i'm sure a lot of doubts have have been got cleared. Uh, any other question or any comments, director, sir, if you have? Uh, yeah, I just want to know now two, three things. One is, you see, uh, uh, like it was asked earlier also, would it be better to, you know, give them pre reading material? or viewing material and then conduct the sessions and what is the response of students to that that is one and second is how easy or difficult is it to conduct a case study session in class uh, because you know you need uh, participation of the students so online is it mm -hmm. easy comfortable both for the faculty and the students how is it these two questions yeah so Answering your first question first, you have to provide content online in advance. Uh, we usually provide at least, I'm using the word, at least three weeks worth of content in advance. If the three weeks worth of content is not available in advance for from our teaching and learning point of view, it's not a good quality course. So you have to put content online for sure. So two, three weeks material you have to put in advance. Uh, and you should direct students to read it before beforehand for sure. Uh, answering your uh, second question about case study means I teach strategic management and entrepreneurship. So exactly probably like you, I use a lot of case studies. Um, case studies can be done. Case studies can be done exactly like they could be done in a face to face environment. But uh, my personal suggestion is that the length of the case will have to change because you know it's difficult to keep people's attention for a prolonged period of time so do not <clears throat> you know do not give very lengthy cases as i said you know give short precise cases where they can quickly read through quickly discuss and quickly share the uh, quickly share their opinion with you as well as the class but case studies can be done for sure but lengthy cases uh, can be done, I'm not saying, but it, you know, the attention is lost in that. Uh, okay, one more may not be uh, you because of the subjects that you teach, but uh, 
uh, in your discussion with faculty who are teaching subjects you know which are computer based like you know programming like r or maybe python or even uh, uh, statistics or uh, advanced excel where you know students have to be taught they are doing it practically while you are teaching now in a classroom or in a computer room you can go to each individual see what they are doing what the problem they are facing and you know uh, guide them and tell them now what has been the feedback from other faculty who are teaching this subject on teaching it online are they able to uh, teach it or did they have to modify their teaching or it was not successful at all yeah a uh, very good question in fact they have to modify there is no doubt that it has to be modified so say for example in accounting and i'll come to it a little later because we have a lot of it units also um for accounting say for example we teach students a, a software called myob right it's a it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a payment software which australian we it's an australian company so that you know your taxes go straight to the government and stuff like that so think like any software myo now uh, we have myo installed in our uh, computer lab and students when they are about to study myo they go to the computer lab and they use it so that was not possible so we negotiated with myo and we got a student license for myo at a subsidized rate and we gave individual licenses to students to download the myo uh lecturer had to change his delivery uh we created workshop tutorial uh, kind of a model so there was a tutorial model so you know the number of groups were reduced from 60 to 10 and uh, um, we will try and simulate a, a lab kind of an environment where student would screen share just like i am currently I, I just shared my screen before some time with you. Student would share the screen and ask any particular questions which 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 the student has. Now that has worked for this semester. It it we are not going to continue with that approach. We expect that social distancing rules will be. We will try and adhere the social distancing rules and bring students back to laboratory, uh, computer lab. for the effective execution of those kind of units thank you yeah thank you dr hardik it was really great quite a lot of <laughs> thank <those> you <laughs> been answered <laughs>